every language in the world has a giveaway effect meaning that they have some features that are absent in other languages now them being absent is not necessarily an indication that the language is completely different but sometimes it's an indication that those languages are the same as the ones that have those features for example in Hawaii you have words like oh more more and because of the repetition that means it has a feature that is consistent with other Polynesian languages like the word Kamehameha and of course there's other ones that I could use but they tend to do this there is a um, in Hawaii there's a state fish which is called humu humu nuku nuku apua a now again this is a feature of the Hawaiian languages Polynesian languages and you will find this all over but if we go to Africa we will realize that Africa and the Afroasiatic languages we will realize that they have a feature that is consistent within their own languages that's not consistent outside of their languages for example if we take a simple sentence in English like I took my dog to the shop right in that sentence there is nothing that is special that would make you take a second look because it's a very simple English word so the sentence would be in Jayangi says doll now you will notice here that there aren't as many words that are separated and these separations show different words but you notice that the word okay so let's break it down the word inja means my dog but how can this word mean that well the in part is a prefix the ja part means dog right the yami that's a suffix in the prefix ya means belongs to me means mine ngi yi se that's a suffix prefix affix ngi means i yi means taken se means to i have taken it to and then s dolo dolo means shop which is I think borrowed from uh, Dutch and se means to the e is a prefix meaning to c means the and dollar means shop now you'll notice here that even though these words are connected as one word unlike in English there are prefixes and suffixes everywhere this is a feature typical in African languages in Arabic in Coptic in Berber in Somali in West African languages in Cushitic languages all over the world, the place now it doesn't even matter which sentence you pick or apply or whatever you will find these just crop up everywhere that's why a sentence like this is actually a good one now obviously I will not translate every single language perfectly but you will notice that in this simplistic sentence these words will continue to crop up in this manner now obviously English has some suffixes and affixes but they're so rare that they're not even worth using for example let's take the word panther at the end the word er the letter er that would be a suffix if we take the word well if we take the word stops the s at the end would be considered a suffix but obviously in english they don't call it that because there's not enough suffixes and affixes in english to worry about it as in a suffix but words like painted fainted walked talked the last ed is part of what these suffixes would be and they exist like i say in english but they're not as numerous 
as you will find in these African languages. If we take the I hope standardized version of this word in Arabic, Ahadut Kalbi Ila Al Machiri, we will see that these prefixes and suffixes pop up immediately, as you can see. Kalbi would be dog, written in this English alphabet. It's almost easier to see where they are, the prefixes, because they're almost laid out for you with these lines at the top. So let's take the first one, Akhada. The first word, Akhada, of course, has that A over it. That's a prefix. Then, of course, you have the H at the end, which represents another prefix. The, you can say this word in several other ways by switching the prefixes and the affixes typical in Arabic. For example, you could say mahud, which will mean taken instead of took. Then you have kalbi. Kalb means dog. With this I, it means my dog. The word ila, which can be pre is prefixed with this I, the la being the root word. And again, you can see that as a A, that the A is also kind of a suffix, but that's too deep to go into. But right now, this means two, but it's got a prefix and a suffix, and it's hard to explain because let's take the word Allah rather than ila. The word Allah would then mean um on top of whereas ila means to or towards something so you can see that just changing one letter will change the entire meaning of the word and then al machari obviously the al part is a prefix of course this will be absolutely true in ancient egyptian as well like if we look at the first word inak which is the same as the Arabic Ana, but you know, in this case, we'll have the I in the beginning, so it'll be Nak, but Inak means my, right? And then Ana in Arabic would be the same, and Min in Zulu and Bantu languages would be the same as all three of these words. Um, Iwe means take or talk to with the I. As the prefix then you have iwo wo means dog it's the sound that a dog makes wo uh, or wa depending on what you believe they think but we know that it comes from the sound that the dog makes just like the word mew is the word for cat in ancient Egyptian and then of course the rest of the sentence per you can see there pr that means store or house, but store is being something that ancient Egyptian and Arabic have that not, no other African language that is not Afro-Asiatic has is these T's at the end that show gender. So Somali, Cushitic, Berber, all of these, they're gendered languages. And so by adding a T when you're not supposed to, you could instantly feminize a sentence accidentally, which I think I did with one of the words in this sentence, in the Arabic sentence. This genderness is not unique to the Afroasiatic languages, this gender in many languages around the world, but it's unique in Africa because the other African languages are ungendered. Now, of course, because these languages are prefix, suffix, infix languages, they will change always in the middle, end, and beginning. But this happens for a lot of words, something like 40% in Arabic of the, I think, verbs or verb formation, and all this other thing, they will change. But the reason why they change in the other languages is exactly the same because of the consonants. So the consonances will continue to be the same in in some cases they will change, but vowels will change a lot 
switching from one place to another, we will use a word that's very simple in Bantu languages, which is typical in almost every Bantu language, lala, which means sleep. But then let's see what the Arabic looks like first so I can show you this process. One of the coolest things about Arabic is the way they make words, because it's nothing like in English. The vast majority of languages do something called concatenative morphology, which is when you take a root word and tack on prefixes and suffixes to change the meaning. These affixes can be reliably applied to different root words with consistent meaning. So, for example, unblankable always means unable to be blanked. But Arabic does non-concatenative morphology. The core meaning is in the root consonants, and the additional meaning is in the vowel pattern throughout the word. Arabic roots are typically three letters, like k, t, b, related to writing. But we apply a specific vowel pattern to change the meaning of the word, like this pattern, which is the simple past, he wrote. Or this pattern, which is the passive past, it was written. Or this pattern, which is the agent noun, a writer or an author. Or this pattern, a place noun, a place of writing or a library. And we can apply these patterns to other roots, like darasa, related to studying. So he studied, it was studied, one who studies, or a learner, a place of study, or a school. So the core meaning is based on the root consonants, but the additional meaning is based on the vowel pattern. Isn't that so cool? It's very cool and very atypical around the world, but it's actually very typical inside of Africa whether you're talking about West African languages, and I, I'm, I don't really speak West African languages, but I know from observing them that they have the same process. And then there's Bantu languages, which I'm more familiar with, which have this. And again, let's use a very simple word, lala, which means sleep. So the root word then is lala. Most other languages, they would just add a prefix or a suffix so let's say sleep, sleeps, the S would be a suffix making the word plural. Slept would then be the other version of this, which would, you add the thing at the end, and then you shorten the, the vowel, still the E, but now it's a short E instead of a long E, but it's still a E. Asleep, you see there? A and then sleep. You got to put the prefix A, asleep. And this you get again and it carries on. But this you still keep the sleep in the in the middle, meaning that the root word is still sleep. So let's start with how this word lala will be similar to other words around the world like sleep when you say asleep whatever slept oversleep all these words that will make it still have the root of the original so lala ukulala to sleep ola lile the one who has slept olala the sleepers kulala to sleep gokulala by means of sleep. Lalani, go to sleep. So you can tell that there are as many ways that this word remains the same root, lala. But then we start going into it and the, the root becomes obvious that it's consonants because the verbs just break down. And now to prove that the word is the root this is the consonants. Let's look at this word. La le um la le la. It means slumber. Used as a follow as follows. Wa la la um la le la. Wa forty. He slept a slow, long sleep of death. But you see there that the la le rather than la la. But let's use another example. Le le means to be asleep. U le le is asleep isilele someone who's drowsy or wanting to sleep then you have la le lisa well not that one but let's say la lisa to make someone sleep but you see there that it's no longer la la it's la li meaning that that the vowel has changed now by the way this is a dictionary so it's not even giving you the real word this is what I told you because of these suffix and prefixes you can't even dictionary these words because you can't say this Laliza alone it would be Uku Laliza 
which then would make the whole sentence move that way. So it would be U K U and then La Lisa. So now the whole thing is a completely different word. Ogo La Lisa, as you see, help each other sleep. The the consonants are permanently changing. The consonants are permanently staying the same, but the vowels are changing. Arabic is such a huge language that usually when we use non concatenative words, the morphology, we tend to use Arabic as an example, but Africa is filled with these examples. Of course, we can look at Yoruba or Igbo. You can see there that, so just in case you thought that this was just simple, here's how I'm going to complicate it. The word lala, the, fir the first part of the word la has to do, do with going to sleep. And we know this because the root word la in Yoruba and Igbo has to do with dream or night or something like that. So we know that in Bantu, the word la or ya, as you can see in Cameroon, is the root word. The second la seems to be a suffix that is directional. What does this mean? Well, let's try it. Uh, so in Zulu, let's give some examples. Chala means plant. So the cha part has to do with planting and the la is directional. Bala means write. The ba part is scribble or scratch. And la means is directional. Do, to do. Sala stay sa means stay the la part means is directional so the la part at the end is a directional word and the first one is is the original word in the language and we can trace it all the way back to languages like yoruba igbo akan all these west african words and we can also i mean I'll just add this. The word for night in Arabic is Layla. The word for sleep in Akkadian is Salalu. So I'm just going to put that in there. And of course, because Afroasiatic is an African language, plus it's a root word type language you will see that if you look at the word salalum that's only one way of saying it but you can see the root by looking at the other version so durative is salal you can see that it's no longer salalum is salal perfect version is dalal preterite version is lal imperative version salal so you can see there, it's like to lie down, to sleep, to be at rest, to be still, be peaceful, lie still. So in conclusion, what are we trying to say? Well, we're trying to say that the Afroasiatic languages came from the same region. They have this similar property. And they also have something very similar in that they have words that are similar to each other. Now... I want to stress that this is very, very rare to happen anywhere in the world. But for it to happen everywhere in Africa, with the exception of the Khoisan languages, the Khoisan languages would not be from that Central African region anyway. So for the this to happen to every single language in the central african region tells you something very very important now again they went in their own direction and their features even in igbo and yoruba has features that are not typical in bantu languages even though we know they come from the same place and they come from the same origin similar origin